key message from How Does Learning Happen is upholding this view of children as capable and competent and understanding that even at a very early age, the babies and the toddlers have their own ways of being in the world. Yes, uh, so I have to say I absolutely love what Ontario has done in How Does Learning Happen, the, the, the uh, a solid, grounded in research that document is, is just absolutely wonderful. So I think it's really important that we view the child, infant, as a rights-bearing individual. And so that means huge respect, huge respect in following the child's lead. And that means to be an acute observer of what it is that the child uh, shows a preference for. So in the world of a group care, it can become quite challenging because babies have different rhythms uh, and different, uh, different ways that they, they have sleep cycles and when they're hungry and when they're not. And traditionally, it's been like the factory that babies all sleep at the same time, they eat at the same time. But when we're really thinking through the lens of the individual rights of every child as being competent, then we really have to shift our thinking to observing when is this baby tired? When is this baby hungry? And you follow the infant's lead. That's believing in the competence of the baby. Now, the other component of this is we tend to, to be thinking about what's the next stage that the child is going to enter, rather than being fully present with them in the moment. So, you know, I hear stories about uh, uh, child care saying, oh, well, you know, you're going to be moving into the big boy room next, so you can't have your soother and you can't have your blankie. And we're taking away the joy of the moment and the need of the moment thinking about ahead when we think about through the lens of the rights of the child we are asking what are your needs what am i learning from your behaviors and your dispositions and your yearnings and you stay and follow always the child's lead through relationship and connection is it your experience with young children that over time they'll become less reliant on things like soothers, security blankets, stuffies? Absolutely. So um, I have yet to be at a valedictory address where they had their soother with them. <laughs> no, there is absolutely the as the as the involvement and interest and in, uh, exploration of the world increases, then the the other becomes the objects of soothing and the soothers and, and the blankies uh, get left behind. But I've never, ever understood taking away these essential soothing objects from babies and toddlers when it's what they need. And we think as adults, well, we know better and we're going to make you grow up faster. No, no, they will leave them behind when they're encouraged appropriately to do that because they've got other things that they're connecting and find significant in their life. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing, Jean, is a call for thoughtful and really intentional reflective practice about what are educators' expe expectations for their classroom, what are the rules for their classroom, and reflecting on are they really honoring the child's ways of being? Absolutely, Close. That is so much at the heart of the matter and that's the kind of childcare that we must be providing for kids in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks so much, Jean. We're looking forward to exploring that more deeply with our educators in their classrooms.